kind of a nasty, windy March day. It's just tying some flies, going through some fishing gear. Get a nice espresso, locally roasted beans. Figured, hey, what a good time to talk about some fishing gear. I got some new gear, stuff I'm replacing, switching out. I'll be honest, I just want to talk about fishing now. I think by the end of this video, I'll probably be talking 100 miles an hour. I'll be pinging off the walls, but that's good stuff. How's it going? Hope everyone's having a good day. Hope everyone's having a good week. I got fishing on my mind. I'm starting to get that bug. I'm starting to think more and more about spring fishing. A little ways till the ice goes out up here in northern Maine, but it won't be long. It goes fast. Snow goes fast. Today's kind of a nasty day. Windy, cold, kind of that typical March weather. Get a lot of wind in March, uh, but so we'll enjoy a coffee talk some fishing. You know, there's your typical fishing gear, rods, reels, lines, all that stuff you can go over. But there's really, there's a few items I think that we all have that is invaluable. There are things that we can't live without. And there's a few things that I noticed today as I was going through my gear that I can't, I can absolutely not live without. It makes my fishing experience that much better. You know, for a lot of people, it might be a no brainer, uh, but for some people, you know, especially if you cut corners or if you're unorganized, this might help you out. So, you know, as the saying goes, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. It's kind of a main thing. There's a lot of truth to that. If I have a fly out in my hand, it's gonna rain. I don't care what the weatherman says. I don't care if they say 0% chance of rain. It's gonna rain. What do you think? The point is, we're getting, we're getting rain. We're in the middle of a drought. Getting a boat. Getting a boat and it rains. So the first thing that I cannot live without is good rain gear. And I know you're you're thinking, well, that's a no-brainer. You know, have some rain gear. But I mean, get some good rain, invest in some good rain gear. Um, you know, I've done it all. I've done everything from trash bags to ponchos. To remember the old yellow rain slickers? Um, but you know, if you really want to have an enjoyable experience, don't skimp on rain gear. Get, get some decent rain gear. First and foremost is breathability. If it's not breathable, it's going to make me miserable, especially in June. It can be hot and rainy, kind of muggy. and if it's not breathable, you basically have your own climate underneath it and you end up getting wet anyway. So it's almost pointless in having rain gear at that point. The second thing I look for is how comfortable is it moving, especially fly fishing. I want unrestricted range of motion. Um, and I do a lot of hiking in the ponds, stuff like that, carrying stuff. So it needs to be comfortable. And then the last thing that I look for is kind of personal preference, pocket location, access to waders underneath the jacket, obviously style, how it looks, colors, uh, but lots of D-rings, stuff like that. Um, I also like a nice tight cuff on my ring gear. You know, if you're fishing, you're sticking your hands in the water a lot, bringing them up. I don't want water running down my sleeves into my elbows and stuff like that, which I've had ring gear that does that. Um, so having something with a nice tight fitting cuff underneath is something I, I really look for um, in ring gear for fishing. So what am I wearing for ring gear these days? I typically stick with a jacket. I've been using an Orvis Pro wading jacket, lots of pockets, well ventilated, has some vents on the side. If I'm wearing waders, I've got access to the waders through those slits. Hand warming pockets, a lot of points for attachment for forceps, fly patch. I like the color, I like how it looks. It's wicked comfortable. Nice suede collar. I've had rain jackets that kind of irritate the neck, kind of dig into the neck and whatnot. This Pro Guy wading jacket also has, I think they call it like a dolphin skin. It's basically just a rubber, um, maybe like a neoprene rubberized cuff nice and tight around the wrist. If I'm releasing fish, dunking my hands in the water and I pick them up to go cast, I'm not having water run down into my elbow. I'm pretty happy with this so far. It's performed well. I haven't had it in a torrential downpour yet or anything like that. But yeah, it breaks the wind well, uninsulated, layer my clothes underneath it. Uh, it works great. It's supposed to be puncture proof. I don't know how well it's gonna be puncture proof if you're throwing a great big streamer 
They didn't catch it, but they claim it's puncture proof, but I'm pretty happy with it. So the Orvis Pro wading jacket, my go-to so far, don't skimp on rain gear, allows you to go in basically any condition that main weather presents to you. Because if you're gonna wait for the weather to be good, you'll probably never go. Oh, man, that's good espresso. Second item that came to mind is a good backpack. One thing I do with every seasonal sport, hunting, fishing, backpacking, camping, I have several backpacks that I keep with all my gear for that particular sport stored in. Like most people, they're like me. I'm busy with work, kids, family stuff. When it's finally time for me to go hunting or fishing, the last thing I wanna do is be running around the house trying to find where I put this piece of hunting gear or where I put this piece of fishing gear. I basically have things organized in little piles and backpacks full of all my gear ready to go. So when I wanna go fishing, I can just grab my gear and I know everything's in it. I don't have to go searching for it. I don't have to figure out where I put this reel or that line or where my rain jacket is. I can grab and go. So let me grab, I'll show you what I'm, I'm using now. So this backpack is a new addition. I'll go over some of the things I'm happy about and some of the things that I'm not so happy about, um, but I still think it'll work fine. One thing for me, specifically for a fishing backpack, that I always look for and it's what the one I used for years had, is I used to use an L.L. Bean, uh, I forget what the name of the backpack was, but it basically had your main storage compartment, four pockets for reels along the sides, a couple pockets on the front, and then a rod tube holder. Things I look for specifically, gotta have a rod tube holder. I want a place to store reels specifically in the, in the backpack, and extra spools for the reels. I carry several reels at a time. Carry extra spools that, have floating line versus sink tip versus full sink line. So I want all those organized within my backpack. I got my money's worth out of that old L.L. Bean one and it finally busted out the side. Uncomfortable to carry, didn't have the greatest support on the back when you're hiking. And like I said, we hike into a lot of small ponds with a lot of gear. Um, some of the ponds are quite a hike in. So I've had it, I think 25 years. I've gotten my money's worth out of it. So I've been recently, I've been looking for an upgrade, looking for a new backpack. So settled on the Orvis Pro waterproof backpack. It's a 30 liter backpack, 100% submersible. It has a proprietary zipper on it. Uh, tie zip, T-zip, T-zip, don't know how to say it. Um, but the zipper is 100% waterproof, dust proof, air and pressure proof. A um, little bit of a difficult zipper to manipulate. It's, it's a tight zipper. There is a lubricant that comes with the zipper. Um, but the zipper is 100% waterproof. So one of the things that I've struggled with the past few years is being in a canoe, paddling, pulling in line, stripping in line, you inevitably get water in the bottom of the canoe. I'm always trying to find a place to put my backpack up off the floor of the canoe so it doesn't get wet. The backpack I had wasn't waterproof. Um, I know you can use a dry bag. My father uses a dry bag, but they're awkward to carry, it's additional weight. And I just, sometimes I would use it, bring a trash bag, put it in a trash bag, or I set it on top of a life preserver in the bottom of the canoe. But inevitably the bottom of that pack will get wet or the top of it, or if it rains, it would get wet. And all your stuff inside of it gets wet and you're taking everything out to dry it out. So one of the biggest things when I was looking for a new backpack is it had to be waterproof. Rod tube holder, that was a must. Waterproof, water bottle holder, um, extra storage along the belt. Uh, it does have some clips to hold Orvis's chest packs and stuff like that. Nothing I really probably will ever use. This pack has good lumbar support, good straps. You know, it's supposed to be tough. This pack is coated ballistic nylon. Um, my biggest pet peeve with it so far is the lack of compartmentalization in it. It's got a few compartments inside. They're basically, I mean, it's basically a main compartment with a hanging storage flap inside which I can store smaller things. I would really like a specific spot for reels and spools. This doesn't have that. I think I can live without it and be fine. Uh, predominantly what I store in these are, I keep my waders, fly vest, various boxes with flies and stuff like that, extra streamers. Um, and then little odds and ends, lighter uh, bandages. Um, but the biggest thing is I, I wanted to 100% waterproof. I don't have to worry about bringing a dry bag that was comfortable to carry. 
And I think that this solves that problem. Like I said, it's 100% submersible. I hope to never find out if that's true or not, because that means I would have dumped the canoe or something like that. But I think it's gonna work out good. So a good backpack, good storage, keeps your stuff organized, keeps it dry, is a must for me. What else we got here? A waterproof box. Love this a lot. This is one of the newest things that I started bringing quite frequently and it really has a lot to do with doing a lot more recording and get a lot of electronics with me. Gotta keep them dry and gotta keep them safe. I don't want them to get crushed and I don't want them to get wet. Um, so love this little box, Pelican 1450 case. This is a pretty sweet little case. Crush proof, waterproof, I can lock it. If someone can't get in it, they can still steal the box, I guess. You know, well-made, probably most people are familiar with Pelican, make some awesome gun cases, cases for anything. So I have no problem bringing camera gear, other electronics with me, right out in the canoe, keep it locked in this, and I know it doesn't matter what the weather does, or what I do with this, I know the gear is safe. I got one that came with the, what they call it, the pluck and pull foam. So basically it's a solid foam insert with little square like foam perforated pieces that you can customize the slots specifically for whatever gear you have. So if it's a handgun, binoculars, or in my case, camera gear, I got a spot for my camera, microphones, lenses, chargers, all electronic stuff, stick it in here. I've, I've been really happy with this. Um, I forget the price. Pelicans are quite expensive. Um, again, you get what you pay for a lot of the time. And I know a lot of people might disagree. Um, and there is a point of diminished returns, but I found if you really take your time and buy something you like that's gonna serve your needs well, it'll last a long time. And you'll see with this last item, just what I mean about that. So yeah, you know, a little bit pricey. You can get some knockoffs. Like I got a, I think it's called an Apache box it was at harbor freight and it was i got it for my my guns i think i put two or three guns in it and i think i paid i don't know a little over 100 bucks kind of the same concept as a pelican case but about half the price i want to say a pelican case that was an equivalent size was pushing like 400 bucks yeah this has been this has been a must for me i basically have no worries about my camera gear and electronics when we're going fishing um, or anywhere i can put stuff in here throw it in the truck and it can bounce beat around all at once and it's all gonna do a thing, it's perfectly safe. Really happy with this, so this is a must, can't live without it. And the last item I absolutely cannot live without is a good pair of backpacking boots. I know a lot of boots on the market, a lot of personal preference in boots, but I'd found a pair of boots in 2010 and they're still going strong. So we're looking at 13 years later and the fishing we do, a lot of hiking on rough terrain. So a lot of roots, a lot of mud, a lot of rocks, and oftentimes carrying a pretty heavy load. A backpack, a lot of times carrying a canoe on my shoulders. You throw an 80 pound old town canoe on your shoulders and start running through the woods over rocks and roots. You want something solid on your feet with a lot of support. Anything else, you're asking for trouble. A busted ankle, falling on your face, or worse, breaking a, a leg or something like that. These backpacking boots are the Scarpa SLM3. If you're not familiar with Scarpa, it's an Italian company, specializes in high performance footwear, uh, a lot of rock climbing footwear, ski boots, and hiking boots. And these things are by far the best pair of boots I've ever owned, bar none. They're nothing comparable. They're not cheap, but how many pairs of boots can you get 13 years out of and virtually have nothing wrong with them? Um, I, I can't say enough about these boots. Uh, they no longer make this one specifically. It's since been replaced with the Scarpa SL Active, I believe. Looks very similar, a few little tweaks with the boot. Um, but these things are phenomenal. There's a caveat with them. And this may sound a little funny to someone who has never worn a boot like this. These are not comfortable to wear walking out on the back 40. They're not comfortable to walk on pavement, even a level dirt road, it feels funny. They're a very stiff boot, so you get a good power transfer from heel to toe. If you're not familiar with a boot like this, it's gonna feel very awkward on level ground. Where they shine is when you get in rough terrain, roots, rocks, and mud, 
it, there's so much support in these things, especially if you're carrying a load. If I got a canoe on my back or a heavy backpack and I'm carrying, you know, paddles, life preservers, fishing rods, they, it's by far, I can't say enough good things about them. Um, like I said, 13 years old, back in the day, I could go through a pair of boots in a couple seasons easily. I'd blow them outside, just junk. Um, some of the features on this boot, so it's got a, I think it's called Sherpa leather. It's one solid piece of leather all the way around the boot. The leather is actually folded in to form the tongue. So there's no stitching, not Gore-Tex or anything like that. It's just one piece of leather, but I've never had my feet get wet in them. Um, they also will take a cramp on. So it'll tell you just how intense these boots are. Um, I wear them snowshoeing in the wintertime and they are just a good solid boot. Two downfalls to them, they are a bit heavy and they're expensive. I think the Scarpa SL Active is in the ballpark at 350 bucks, 300 bucks. But you know, I got 13 years out of them so far and they're going strong. You know, when I first bought them, had a hard time parting with that much money for a pair of boots. Do you know what? That averages out over the course of 13 years and I don't feel a bit bad. More than got my money's worth out of them. And I wouldn't be surprised if I could get another five or 10 years out of them. So if you're looking for a good backpacking boot, Look at the Scarpa SL Active. These are the Scarpa SL M3. Don't make them anymore, but a phenomenal boot. That coffee's, coffee's kicking in. So those items are basically what makes the most miserable day weather-wise, um, or whatever mother nature throws at you. It makes that day much more enjoyable, much more tolerable, um, and you can really enjoy fishing enjoy spending time in the outdoors, regardless of the weather conditions. So, you know, it's good to be prepared. You can get by without, you know, good rain gear. But I mean, if you're gonna do this for any time at all, and you're gonna do it seriously, and you wanna have the best time possible, really in, in, invest in some good quality gear. And if you buy the right stuff and take care of it, it'll last a long time. I know you can get by with cheaper stuff. As I said, I've done garbage bags, ponchos, um, buy quality stuff, make it last, take care of it, and it'll pay dividends in the end. So, you know, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything, or if there's something you use fishing that you absolutely can't live without, that makes your fishing trips that much more enjoyable, makes the bad weather that much more tolerable. I'd love to hear about it. Always looking for new tricks and new things to add to my, to my repertoire. Um, I'm not one to sit here and look outside and be like, well, it's a bad day today, I'm not going fishing. I only have so many days off, when I'm off and I've got a fishing trip scheduled, I'm going. You know, I wait for the perfect day. I may never get to go. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped. So I'll finish this coffee. Finish going through my gear. Maybe tie a few more flies. Start dreaming about fishing. So until next time, get outside. It's good for the soul. See ya. Phew. That is good coffee. And it's all gone.